Okay, thank you so much. Anyone can see you, anyone can see you, Hashimika. I hope that uh, you are not tired. And uh, good, very good morning. Uh, I was a little late, in fact, I was in a hurry when I came. Uh, so because of that, I have to relax for a few minutes. <laughs> Uh, my paper is on Andalusian and Sicilian rationalism underlying the European rationalism and Renaissance. In fact, I, uh, in a few uh, days ago, uh, suddenly I have decided to prepare a relevant paper uh, to our conference. So I was in Hali also and at the same time I have to have some preparation for another program and exhibition, so I was under the heavy pressure, but anyhow, finally it's finished. But uh, I hope that you tolerate me if there is any shortcoming. Uh, my presentation and my paper is divided in three parts. One introduction, and second chapter is about macrocultural developments and the emergence of great civilization as a common human heritage, and then conclusion. So uh, I will just go through it, and in the second chapter, I am uh, going to emphasize on the rationalist movement as, a, as the cause of the flourishing of Muslim civilization in the medieval age, the Andalusian uh, rationalism, uh, rationalism and also rationalism in uh, Sicily, and then uh, rationalism in uh, Renaissance in Europe. So I want to, uh, through this arrangement, I want to emphasize that the core of uh, the Renaissance, uh, the uh, more important things in Renaissance is rationalism. That means the view. The view of rationalism is the main uh, reason for change, whether during the Andalusian time, Andalusian time, or uh, during the Renaissance or any other period, uh, uh, rationalism is a very important issue. That is the main cause of Renaissance at any age. The Renaissance was a turning period in the European history from medieval period to modern age. The Renaissance was a turning period in European history from Dark Age to, to the Age of Enlightenment. Purposely, I have put these two phrases uh, because there is two view here. Uh, there is a view that uh, Renaissance, in fact, is an independent European movement. So it is a kind of internal and uh, internal European movement. So Renaissance is not related to any other period. Uh, it is a European movement. So the main uh, uh, purpose of this is that the Renaissance <coughs> Uh, it is based on, uh, on Greek philosophy, Roman culture and civilization, and <clears throat> finally the Renaissance. So all of them are European. That means Greek uh, philosophy, Roman civilization, and finally comes to Renaissance. So this is one uh, one, of, one theory <coughs> about the Renaissance in Europe. Uh, 
And the second one, the Renaissance, was a turning point, turning period in European history from Dark Age to the Age of Enlightenment. This is another theory <coughs> which mostly some historians emphasize on the issue. Uh, some Europeans are not comfortable and happy when they use Dark Age. So, and mostly these people try to connect and interrelate uh, the Renaissance, European Renaissance, with, uh, with the medieval civilization. So these two views are there, so because of that I have mentioned these two paragraphs, two sentences that they are very similar to each other. It is based on the emphasis that these two groups have. Does the, uh, the, the main question is this, does the Renaissance have anything to do with medieval civilization and previous civilizations? So it is a, one important question I, have, I am going to answer in my presentation. The answer that uh, very briefly I can say is archaeological excavations and historical evidence strongly testify that civilization and cultural developments in various parts of the world, including Mediterranean, are interrelated. So we cannot say that uh, one particular uh, civilization is independent and it came from heaven, it was in a box and gifted by God to one civilization. So suddenly one nation got up and saw that they have been civilized and there is a renaissance. So it is not correct view. So based on that I want to say that all civilization are interrelated and they are connected to each other and they have roots in each other. No civilization has been formed in vacuum and isolation. So this is the main view that I am going to follow in, the, in my presentation and also I follow the same thing in my uh, paper. Uh, here I have shown two, I have shown two uh, maps. Uh, one map uh, I am showing here, uh, that means pre-Persian uh, era. This is the Persian um, map at that time, Persian Empire. In fact, it was sometime expanded or maybe they have lost some territories, but in general, uh, when, when they had a very large empire, it covered these areas. Uh, it covered uh, the area, uh, very large area of Asian and especially West Asian parts of the world and also European part and African part, Medi uh, Middle East, so all were territory, were territory of uh, Persian Empire. So in the other uh, one, in other uh, map, I just show, I wanted to say before I am going to emphasize on before Persian Empire or Persian civilization. During this period, we have uh, a small, small uh, and local civilization in Mediterranean region and Mesopotamia. So we have uh, Mesop uh, Macedonian and carrot uh, civilization. We have uh, Greek civilization. We have uh, Assyrian civilization. We have in Mesopotamia, we have Mesopotamian civilization. We have uh, Egyptian civilization. So these uh, civilization, Phoenicians, Assyrian, Babylon, Babylons, and all these small, small civilization were uh, living around the uh, eastern part of uh, Mediterranean region. 
So uh, they had uh, a lot of contact with each other, these uh, small civilizations, uh, until the Cyrus the Great uh, uh, advanced. At that time, he uh, united all these uh, tribes and local uh, civilizations in the region, and he created a very a large civilization, Persian Empire and Persian civilization. As you see this uh, two map, and I have shown that uh, in in the eastern part of Mediterranean we had a small, a small uh, local civilization. But uh, this uh, map, that means the map of Persian Empire, covered all these uh, civilization. That means it was like an umbrella for all these civilization from Greek and Crete and Phoenician and uh, uh, Assyrian, Babylon, Egypt. All these civilization came under the umbrella of Persia. So uh, at, in the ancient time, we can see that Persian civilization uh, owed to all these uh, small civilizations. Uh, so the, uh, when the Persian uh, Empire came to power, then it covered all these uh, civilizations. So they are interconnected. That means Persian civilization is not came, just came from the heaven. It was uh, based and also rooted in the previous civilization. Oh, really? Okay, I am going fast. So, no, uh, no civilization has been formed in vacuum. So, I, based on this issue, I am going to emphasize throughout history, Mediterranean Sea has served as a bridge between different ethnic groups, as I mentioned. People who were living in the east and west, north and south of Mediterranean have been in constant contact with each other. They have long history of exchange of people, goods, service, services, culture, religious and philosophical thought. They immigrated and lived together at the different time in the history the same people have changed their belief and religions from uh, idolatry to Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and modern civilization. That means we didn't import, no, no one imported people from one place to another place by airplane or by ship. These people themselves changed their views, changed their culture, changed their religion, Throughout history, they have changed uh, many times. And uh, during the peace period, in fact, uh, whenever there was peace in the region, these relation was based on the peaceful uh, interactions. And when it was war time, they have a long experiences of conflict, war, such as the Persian and Macedonian war, 700 years of Persian and Roman wars, centuries of war between Muslims and Romans and Kerusides, uh, uh, thousands of uh, scientists and a skilled prisoner, prisoner of war I mean, were taken from, uh, from each other, these people taken many prisoners of war, a skilled one, so they have lived with these uh, uh, prisoners of war um, uh, in their society, and uh, many technology, many uh, uh, technique has been transferred, many knowledge has been transferred through these prisoners of war to the uh, victorious, uh, uh, victorious forces and the nation. They ruled over each other lands and territory and lived together for quite a long time sometimes. Now, for example, Persian gone to Greece and Greece, uh, Greek people also came to 
uh, Persia during Alexander the Great. So they, they have established dynasties, they live together. So through these uh, interactions, whether during the war period or whether during the peace period, they had a lot of uh, action and reaction, interaction with each other, and they learned from each other, they transferred many techniques, many knowledge uh, and religion and philosophy together. So we cannot say that uh, the one, uh, one uh, civilization is independent and doesn't have any relation with the previous one. So no civilization has been formed in a vacuum and isolation, so Renaissance also is not an exception. So based on this, I want to emphasize that the Renaissance was intellectual and theoretical development. Inquisition uh, courts were established, philosopher and uh, scientists were imprisoned, tortured, killed, just for, for the Renaissance. That means because they have changed their mind, they have changed their views. So because of that, during the uh, transfer or during the transformation period or during the uh, uh, turning point during the Renaissance, these activities were going on in the European society. Even the view on religion changed at this time and Protestant was formed at this time. So Newton and Galileo and other uh, people, scientists, were, uh, were uh, have to appear in the court just because of the Renaissance, just because of their uh, viewpoint. So this is the very important things that has happened. I think this is the main uh, uh, cause of uh, of. Uh, Renaissance in Europe. So uh, now I want to uh, connect this movement, these signs with the uh, Andalusian time. In Andalusian time also, when at the, especially at the end of uh, Andalusia period, we can see that same uh, movement were going there. Over several centuries, three important intellectual current were uh, gradually formed in, an, in Andalusia. The proponent of Maliki uh, juris, jurisprudence, this was one uh, current and one uh, type of uh, uh, current uh, thought, current of thought in, um, in the Andalusia. They normally were against the Renaissance movement in Andalusia and, uh, and Inquisition in Andalusia also, they have started against philosopher. The uh, supporter of the school of jurisprudence and Sufism, and Andalusia, and especially uh, Al-Ghazali Sufi, Ash'ari, and jurisprudential school, and his books against rationalism and against philosopher, spread like a storm throughout the Islamic world, including in Andalusia. Even uh, the, uh, one of the students of uh, Al-Ghazali, Ibn Tumert, he came to Morocco and he started the movement against, Murab uh, against Murabetun and he, the name of his movement as a student of Al-Ghazali was Mubahedun. They were able to uh, topple the uh, uh, Murabetun and they have controlled the whole area of Morocco and Andalusia. So I want to say that you can see the influence of thought of Al-Ghazali on, uh, on Andalusia. These movement, that means the Maliki jurisprudence movement and also the Al-Ghazali movements and Sufi type of thinking, they were against philosopher. The another current which uh, they were uh, the signs of Renaissance in Andalusia was the current of rationalists and philosopher. It was led by Ibn Bajje and Ibn Tufayl and also Ibn Rush. Ibn Rush is one of the most famous philosopher in Islamic world and still has a great reputation in European and Western country. 
establishment of inquisition uh, courts in Andalusia started here and uh, philosophers were present, tortured and killed just for the Renaissance than because they have philosophical thinking. So I wanted to just relate these two together, two signs together. That means the root of Renaissance and the inquisition of, uh, of uh, courts in uh, Renaissance song in Europe, it is copied or it is the continuation of the court of inquisition in Andalusia. Just I, I want to uh, add this point about the uh, Sicily. Okay, Sicily. In Sicily, in fact, the situation was different. In Sicily, uh, the Fatimid uh, Fatimi, uh, Empire, they were controlling Sicil, uh, Sicily. And in Sicily, they, uh, the, uh, the Fatimid and Kalbid, they followed uh, multiculturalism. That means they didn't emphasize on particular culture and uh, views. So, but in Andalusia, there was, there was, as I mentioned, Inquisition court was controlling. They were monoculture, they, are, they were pro monoculture. But in uh, Sicily, the situation was different. Their policy was multiculturalism, and um, people were uh, free to uh, emphasize on their views. So, the philosophical views. Christians, Muslims, Sunnis, Shias, all were free to follow their religion and their thoughts. And it was a very good atmosphere to transfer the Islamic civilization or the medieval civilization uh, to, the, uh, to the very close ports of Italy. And from Italy then it is transferred to Europe and all these books were translated, that means from the previous uh, works of uh, philosophers of Islam and also Muslims and also uh, Greek philosophies that uh, preserved by Muslims, they hand over to the European uh, thinkers and uh, the Renaissance is rooted in the uh, medieval Islamic civilization. And based on that, in final point and conclusion, I want to say no civilization formed in vacuum. Thank you.